Hey guys, John Henry here from Trafalgar, and today I'm joined by a special guest. He's been very jealous of the amount of attractions and likes I've been getting on LinkedIn and YouTube. He's our Managing Director, General Manager, aka the Back Controller, Mr. John Rackett. Thanks, John. It's about time you invited me to a video. Today we're going to be talking about Sidrise CWFS Cavity Barrier System. So this is a system that we brought in from the UK, from Sidrise which we've tested locally to AS standards, and we're going to be showing you today how bloody easy it is to install this on a building site. Okay, John, so we've got a 150 mil gap. That's right. And we need how much compression? 10%. 10%, even my maths is good for that. 15 on top of, 10% of 150, 15. So 165 mil is what the cut size of the CWFS for the 150 mil gap is. So we've marked that up, we've measured it. We've got a straight edge. Now, this is a bread knife. These young guys around me don't know what a bread knife is. This is what you cut the end of bread with. This is before we had sliced bread. So us old blokes know what it, see it's got a serrated edge and a little point there. So with the straight edge, all we've got to do, is okay, go along the straight edge with the red knife, look. And it's cut, of course, we'll just have to trim the foil at the end of it. We'll just take it to the edge point, John, and I'll just quickly trim the edge of the foil, so it's nice and neat. And there you have it. So Johnny, Please. why wouldn't you get this pre-cut up at Trafalgar's Woodshop? You can get it pre-cut, but what we're finding over the last 12 months of selling it is that the slab varies a little bit, there's tolerances in the curtain wall, and it's pretty hard if it's cut too small to extend it. So it's pretty easy to take the boards, measure each one, quick red knife, it's not like it's hard to cut. So that's probably my preference, if I was a contractor, would do this on site myself and make sure it's compressed in nice and tight around the entire perimeter, the way it's been fired in. Excellent. Now what brackets are we going to need for this, John? Brackets, yes. So, we have a, the cider ice has a couple of size brackets because of course this can go anywhere down from, you know, 25, 50 mil, very small cavities, all the way up to over three or 400. I don't, even I don't know, I have to check the technical manual, but it is a pretty big gap. So for the 150 mil gap, these have to protrude 75%. So a 110 mil bracket will do it for me. Now, how are we gonna put these brackets in? Do we put them on the slab first? No, the smartest way, and you'll see, if I just come in a bit closer to the camera, there's notches in these little um, brackets. So this notch is 110 mil wide. So I can fold that quite easily on the notch and fold it up again if I choose to, to go on the slab edge. It's got a little rounded point here. And all we really need to do, John, you can demonstrate this one if you like, is at the mid height of the CWFS and we come in 300, 300 millimetres. So just do that, 300 mil. There, in the middle of the rock wall, poke her in. Pushes in nice and easy and you can see now, if I turn it sideways, that will get dynabolt to the slab. So we'll put the other ones in, and then we'll go and put this piece in and show you how easy it is to fit off. Here we are now, ladies and gents. Uh, about to put our 165 um, piece of CWFS with a 10% compression into this 150 mil gap. And as you can see here, I'd need to compress this to go in, but I've noticed there's a mullion here. So what I've done is I've marked out where I need to cut the cider eye so I can have a nice tight fit on the mullion to maintain the fire and smoke seal. So I'm now gonna cut this and come back. Okay, I've just put on that cutout or that marking that I had for the mullion, just make sure that's right, that looks nice and tight there before I slot it in. So the trick with the cider eyes is to get it in the position, and if you roll it, you can see that it's starting to compress into the opening here. 
I've got my angle brackets in already because if I don't, they're going to be pretty tricky to stab in once that's in there. So I'm going to push it in with compression, as you can see, make sure everything's nice and tidy and I'm ready to dyna bolt these onto the slab. Just make sure everything's nice and I'm ready to tape up the butt joints and continue on the, the, uh, the length of the building along the fire rated slab edge. So while jo Johnny goes and gets me some foil tape, which provides the smoke seal on the butt joints, I just want to explain a little bit about the benefits of this cavity wall fire stop. Pre-foiled, easy to identify material. If you look down this edge, these are lamella, or strips of solderized stone wool that have been pre-compressed together in the perfect orientation. So as this facade, with the wind and building movement, rocks in and out, the solderized material will stay there. It won't fall out, which is very important because of course in a fire, we want the material to be there. So I, I really like that concept. Uh, the certifiers are saying to us that they love the fact that one, all the components are supplied by Trafalgar and Siderite. So that's the mounting angles, the, the pre-laminated, engineered, factory-made board with the identification, the mounting tape, uh, the, the, uh, the, the tape that we do the joints with for the smoke seal. And best of all, there's an app. So if you download the free app, and you take photos as you go, you get a warranty and certification from Ciderize globally, free of charge. I think it's fantastic. Okay, so we're back just for one of the last steps is to make sure wherever there's a butt joint so that we don't need to use sealant because it's messy and dirty, we can just do a dry fire and smoke seal here by just taping up the butt joints like so. So you imagine this comes in 1.2 metre long lengths so every 1.2 metres, we're going to have a butt joint, a nice tight butt joint, we're going to tape up just the top. And this is actually in here, under compression, it's quite, quite strong as you can see. Water can pull on this, stone wool is impervious to water absorption. As long as the building dries out, the cider eyes will be dried out and it's good for life. Alrighty, John's gone up to the servo to get a pie, so I thought I'd quickly jump in and recap on what we've done. Um, and it's really nice to get someone else to do one of these videos for a change. John's walked you through how to cut the side rows, how to use the brackets. We haven't installed or fixed them, um, but you're going to need some masonry acres to fix it into the concrete. Um, and at the end of the day, it's a really simple system to use. No continuous metal angle flashings, the side rows, CWFS will be fire and smoke seal all in one, not to mention your thermal and acoustics. It's really just a really well-rounded product. It's simple to support technically and something you should really be considering for your next project. Thanks guys, we'll see you next week.